Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about features of a long bone. I'll talk about compact bone and spongy bone. So on the screen here we see a typical long bone. This is the femur. On the one side we see a longitudinal section through a living femur that includes blood vessels and bone marrow and membranes. And then on the other side of the screen we see a longitudinal section through a dried dead femur. The first thing I'd like to point out on these femurs are the knobby ends, which are called the epiphyses, that's the plural, epiphysis for singular. Right? And then there's a long, narrow middle portion, and that's called the diaphysis, um, sometimes referred to as, uh, as a shaft. The epiphyses are the knobby ends, again, of, of a long bone. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to find in an epiphysis. Right? Um, the outside of an epiphysis is going to be covered with either a membrane called the periosteum or articular cartilage. Right? So the part of the, of the epiphysis that's at the joints will be covered in the articular cartilage. And this cartilage is important because it helps to reduce friction where one bone meets another bone. You don't want bone to rub up against bone because then the bone will eventually wear away. So we coat the ends of bones with cartilage and that allows the bones to move and slide right past each other at the joint. So you find articular cartilage on the outside of the epiphysis at a joint but you don't need cartilage in the parts of the epiphysis that are not at the joint, so you'll find periosteum, a membrane instead, lining the outside of the epiphysis in those areas. If you go deep to the periosteum or articular cartilage, you will find a layer of compact bone, which we can see here. Okay. Just deep to the compact bone, you'll find spongy bone. Right, and spongy bone looks a lot like a sponge, hence the name. And just like a sponge can become filled with water, this spongy bone is actually filled with bone marrow. So it's filled with bone, uh, yellow bone marrow in the picture here. Now taking a look, closer look at the diaphysis. Okay. Um, so the diaphysis again is the long shaft-like portion of a long bone. The outer portion of a living diaphysis is covered with a membrane called the periosteum. And if we go just deep to the periosteum, you will find a layer of compact bone. And deep to the compact bone is a layer of spongy bone. You can't see it very well in this picture here, the living bone, but if you look over here at the dried bone, you can see how it looks a bit rough in the interior here. And that roughness is actually due to a thin layer of spongy bone. And then there's a very obvious cavity or space here in the diaphysis, and that's called the marrow cavity or the medullary cavity, and it's filled with bone marrow in the living bone. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about compact bone. Right? So first, a little bit of information on the location of compact bone. Um, compact bone is found deep to the periosteum of long bones, it forms the majority of the diaphysis, and it also forms a thin layer on the outside of the epiphyses. Look, taking a look at the picture below, can you tell which arrows are pointing to the compact bone? If you said this one, and this one, and this one, then you're correct. This arrow is pointing to spongy bone, and this arrow is also pointing to spongy bone. When we look at compact bone under a microscope, we can see that it has a very unique organizational pattern. We see these things that kind of look like tree stumps. These are called osteons. So the basic functional unit within a compact bone is something called an osteon. And just like a tree stump has tree rings that go around it, the osteon has rings that go around it too. These rings are called concentric lamellae. And what makes up a concentric lamellae are layers of osteocytes and matrix. So this is an osteon here, and this is my little artist rendition, if you will, of an osteon. Okay. And you can see there's a central area. Okay, this is called the central canal. And then you have these layers. These are the concentric lamellae that make up the, the growth rings, if you will, of the osteon. 
Unlike the growth rings on a tree, these particular rings have nothing to do with age or growth or anything. The little dark splotches in the picture here are representing the bone cells called osteocytes. And then the sort of yellowish colored material outside the osteocytes is representing the matrix of the bone. So these osteocytes are completely surrounded by matrix. And it's sort of as if the osteocyte is completely surrounded by bricks because this matrix is made of calcium and phosphate and collagen. And calcium and phosphate is pretty much rock. And so these osteocytes are surrounded by rocks and it makes it very difficult for the osteocytes to obtain nutrients like uh, water and glucose, for example. Um, and it's also difficult for the osteocytes to get rid of wastes. Um, and that's a good thing that the osteocytes are connected one to another by canaliculi. In the picture here, I drew some canaliculi, these little blue string-like structures. These are little tiny canals that connect one osteocyte to the next. The central canal here of the osteon would contain blood vessels. And these blood vessels are carrying oxygen and nutrients. And the canaliculi of this osteocyte here that's very close to the blood vessel, um, this canaliculi can slurp up nutrients and gases for this particular osteocyte. Now this osteocyte here that's three layers away, it has a more difficult time obtaining things like glucose and water. Um, because the water and the glucose cannot diffuse through the layers of brick here. But what can happen is that the canaliculi that connect adjacent osteocytes, the canaliculi can be used to share things like glucose and water and other nutrients. So this osteocyte can share glucose with its neighboring osteocyte, which can share with its other neighboring osteocyte, so on and so forth. I want to talk a little bit about the osteonic canals. The osteonic canals include the central canal that I introduced you to on the previous slide. Um, these canals or spaces are associated with osteons and they contain blood vessels for carrying nutrients and wastes um, and other materials. And there are two main types of osteonic canals. Central canals, which are also known as Havergian canals, and then Volkmann's canals, which are also known as perforating canals. The central canals run the same way as an osteon, so they, we say they run parallel to the osteon, whereas the Volkmann's canals run the opposite way of the osteon, so they run per perpendicular to the osteon. To show you a picture to describe this, right? so here we see several osteons, right? here's one osteon, here's another, here's another, here's a longitudinal section through an osteon, nice side view here. You can very clearly see the central canal Right, the central canal containing blood vessels, and it's running the same way as the osteon. Now looking here, we can see these perpendicular canals, and these are the Volkmann's canals, right, also containing blood vessels. So again, the difference between the central canal and the Volkmann's canal is its orientation. Central canals go up and down, if you will, and then the Volkmann's, Volkmann's canals are going side to side, if you will. And this is just another picture demonstrating the same thing. Here we can see an osteon, and in the center of the osteon we have blood vessels in the central canal. And here's another central canal with blood vessels, but then here's a Volkmann's canal here. You can see another Volkmann's canal here. Our last topic is on spongy bone. Right, so first a little bit on the location of spongy bone. Um, spongy bone is what faces the medullary cavity of the diaphysis. It forms the majority of the epiphyses, most of it's covered by a membrane called the endosteum. See if you can take a minute to, to tell which arrows in the picture here are pointing to the spongy bone. If you chose this one, and this one, and this one, then you are correct. So the spongy bone is pretty evident in the epiphyses, but it's a little less evident here in the medullary cavity. There's a thin layer of spongy bone that lines the medullary cavity. <clears throat> spongy bone is a little bit different than compact bone. Um, one of the things that makes it, it different is the fact that it's not compacted together like in compact bone. With compact bone we have one osteon butting up right against another osteon and they're all nice and tightly fit together. With spongy bone, you don't see that. You have these spicule-like structures. You can see this picture here. 
it looks like you have tiny little bone spicules all over the place, little needles, if you will, of bone. And that's very much what spongy bone would look like. Um, there are no osteons in spongy bone. If we were to look at a cross section through a spicule of spongy bone, we would see this. And it does look similar to an osteon, but it is not an osteon. Um, I forgot to mention the name for the spicule like structures in the spongy bone. They're called trabeculae. And trabeculae means small beam in Latin. And these do look like small little beams. So here we're looking at the spongy bone in an epiphysis. So here's a close-up of those trabeculae that I mentioned. And again, here's another cross-section through a trabecula. And this is a close-up of that cross-section. And you can see how it kind of looks a little bit like an osteon, but we're definitely lacking a central canal here. There is no, nothing equivalent to a central canal here. We do have layers, lamellae, like we saw in the osteon. We do have osteocytes. Right? We do have canaliculi connecting osteocytes, um, and we even have end osteum, a, a membrane surrounding it. So the cross section of a trabecula looks a lot like an osteon, but without the central canal. Um, the trabeculae do contain osteocytes, lots of matrix, um, canaliculi, and lamellae. And the outside of trabeculae are covered with a membrane called the end osteum. The spaces between adjacent trabeculae are filled with bone marrow. So in the picture here, the red, if you will, it's kind of the background, that would be bone marrow. Right? So again, remember spongy bone is like a sponge. It becomes filled with bone marrow though instead of water. There are no blood vessels in the trabeculae. Again, there were no central canals, so there are no blood vessels in the trabeculae. Um, instead, what happens, the blood vessels from the outside of the bone, the periosteum, will run through the osteonic canals of the compact bone, which we see here, and then those same blood vessels will enter into the marrow of the bone. So my question to you is, is if there are no blood vessels in the spongy bone, then how do the osteocytes of the trabeculae obtain nutrients and oxygen if they don't have blood vessels in them? So take a minute and see if you can figure that out. The answer is here in this picture. Now don't forget that these trabeculae are surrounded by bone marrow. And if you look, there's teeny tiny little openings on the trabeculae, and these are openings to canaliculi. So essentially what's happening are these canaliculi are slurping in the bone marrow. And don't forget, the canaliculi are connected to osteocytes. So if we can slurp bone marrow into the canaliculi, we can transfer that bone marrow to an osteocyte. And then the osteocyte can obtain nutrients and gases and other things from the bone marrow. We've talked a little bit about bone marrow, but to give you a little bit more detail on that, um, bone marrow is found in the marrow or medullary cavity of long bones, and it's also found in the spaces between the trabeculae of the spongy bone. Um, there's two types of bone marrow, red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow. Red bone marrow is a tissue composed of many cells, including red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. There's a, uh, a stem cell that's found in red bone marrow, or I should say a type of stem cell found in red bone marrow called hematopoietic stem cells. And these hematopoietic stem cells produce all of the different blood cell types. Red bone marrow is only found in certain bones in the adult. It is found in um, mostly flat bones, like the hip bone, the scapula, the ribs, the sternum, even um, some bones of the skull. Those are all very rich in red bone marrow. Um, the main function of red bone marrow is hematopoiesis, which is the fancy name for producing blood cells. The other type of bone marrow is called yellow bone marrow. Um, yellow bone marrow is yellow because it has been um, filled with fat, which tends to be yellow to white in color. The yellow bone marrow was no longer functioning in, in hematopoiesis. Um, instead, basically, the yellow bone marrow is just serving as storage for fat.